I have found this great poet. I was on the Hopeful Forum, which is Carrie Hope Fletcher's uh, forum where you can talk to other people who like her. And I was on there and I was talking to other writers and Erin Hansen responded to a thread that I made about writers telling me about her poetry and linking me to her Tumblr, which is the poeticunderground.tumblr.com. And I read the first poem and I was hooked. I have her book that you can order. I'll put a link down below to everything about her. Her poems are just, they're so poignant and they're really, really well done. They take the ideas that you don't want to talk about and put them in 14, 15, 12, 4 lines. Look at all these tags. Look at all these little things. These are all of the poems that I want to share with you guys. But I'm going to share a couple of my favorites. One of them is my background on my computer right now. And I really, really, really love it. It's called Just Words. Are there really just words strung out across paper, or are they answers to questions we've not learnt to ask? If they're really just words, then how come when we read them, we feel like someone has seen through our mask? I don't think just words can hold such a power that makes us believe that there really is hope. There has to be something in words that will help you hold on when you're reaching the end of your rope. The people that write them are doing magic. They change the whole world to paper and pen. And then I may be one is a dream I keep having, if given the chance to live my life again. They can't be just words when you stop feeling lonely, as if the author is someone you, that you've always known. Like a hand has reached out to brush tears from your cheek when you're reading the words in your room all alone. Just Words is definitely my favorite one of her poems. Because, I mean, I'm a writer and it really, it really hits home. But I really, really like this one. This one's called Time. I interviewed a woman with an illness in her heart. I was there to ask her questions, but didn't know quite how to start. How do you ask a person who can count their time that's left, which moments they regret in life, and which ones they like the best? I didn't know how quite to ask her if she could give me some advice, when I was given my whole life to live, and she'd only got a slice. I was scared that she would judge me for wasting minutes of her time, so I asked her just one question as I heard her old clock chime. I asked her what it felt like, knowing that soon she would die, and as she told me her short answer, she looked me straight into the eye. I might know my time is ending, but pity for you is all I've got, since I wake knowing that I'm dying, but you wake pretending that you're not. Oh, I could find some. They're so good. They're all so good. I can't choose. I can't choose. I, oh, I can't choose. They're so good. Okay. This one's titled Greener Grass. What if grass is greener on the other side because it's always raining there? Where the ones who, ne who never fail to give hardly have enough to spare. Where the people with the broadest smiles have pillows filled with tears, and the bravest ones you've ever known are crippled by their fears. It's filled with lonely people, but they're never seen alone. Where those that lack real shelter make you feel the most at home. Maybe their grass looks greener because they've painted on it too. Just remember, from the other side, your grass looks greener, too. I really like that one. Okay, this one is, oh, it's one of my favorite ones. It's called A Poem for Society. You told her if she wore that dress, she'd be the prettiest of all. You told her that she should wear high heels because she needed to be tall. You told her how to cut her hair and how much skin to show. You told her exactly what to wear. Trust me, because I know. You told her if she wanted boys, she had to change her ways. You told her to wear makeup because plain skin's not okay. You told her who she could love that anything different was wrong. But you made her feel secluded, like she never would belong. She hated wearing dresses, and she couldn't walk in heels. She couldn't live to your standards and all of your ideals. So you told her what she felt was the furthest from the truth. She couldn't be depressed because she was in her youth. You told her she was a freak, that she never would fit in. But then you told her nothing, as she pressed a blade up to her skin. And once she had decided that you would tell her nothing more, you wish you'd told the truth as she collapsed onto the floor. She didn't need the makeup, that just being her was fine. She could wear what made her happy, that she could not be defined. Then when you came to realize that she never knew you cared, you wish that you'd have told her the world was better with her there. 
I fudged a couple of lines in that one. Her poems tackle things like that. Last one. It doesn't have a title. If I could tell you only one thing, my message would be this. The world would be a lonely place if you did not exist. Her poems are good, and I love them, I love them, I love them so much. You should all buy her book, check out her Tumblr. Erin is great. I've only talked to her a little but I ordered her book, and I'm glad that I did, because now I have I have a thing, and I can pick it up, and I can I can have it, I can... I can do like Lilith and Rosehead and just open it up and be like, okay, this is, this is my, this is my poem that will tell me what happens next because they're all about life. They're so real and I love them, but you guys should all go buy her book. It's really great. Erin, I love your poems. They're so good. Thank you, Carrie, for setting up this forum so that I can meet people like this. Okay. Bye, guys.